And we're live! And we're live. <laughs> Hi. Hello everyone and welcome to the City of Ashes live show by Cassandra Claire. Um, so I don't know how many of you had tuned in for the City of Bones live show, but that's also live on this channel. Um, and today we're going to be discussing City of Ashes. So I have some lovely co-hosts here with me from the Dreg Society Facebook group, which is linked below. And if you guys are somehow unaware, because I talk about it all the time, I'm hosting a read-along for the entire Shadowhunter Chronicles by Cassandra Clare, and all that info is in the description as well. So uh, I think we can start off by introducing ourselves and getting to know you all, and we can share some of our spoiler-free thoughts on City of Ashes, like our star rating and what we thought of it and whatnot. So if y'all don't know me, I'm Emma from Emma Books. Um, this is my ninth time reading yeah. City of Ashes. Oh my god. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, it's a lot. And I gave City of Ashes five out of five stars, of course. Um, I have to say, I feel like I actually enjoyed City of Ashes the most out of all nine rereads before, which is super exciting. I've like always considered it my least favorite book, but now I just think it's like in relation to the other books, it's not my favorite, but I definitely loved it so much more this time than ever before. So Trin, if you wanna. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Trin. My booktube channel is Transformers. You know, like the movie Transformers. <laughs> But I have That's never so seen the movie. Cool. I have never seen the movie, so don't ask me about the movie, please. <laughs> like I don't know anything. But um, this is my second time reading City of Ashes, and this book means a lot to me because this is the book that changed my life. It it made me read like five years ago because I read City of Bones in the beginning of 2013, but then I read this in the summer of 2013 and I was in Vietnam. I read this in four days and I could not get City of Ashes, I mean, City of Glass because I was in Vietnam. No. I didn't have the books. So I had, to oh wait my gosh. Like, I had to wait for like three weeks to come back to the States, get all of Cassandra Clare's books and read the, <laughs> all of them in like two months. <laughs> so this book changed my life the most and I give this book five out of five stars, I think I like it better the second time I read it. And it means a lot to me because it's sen sentimental, of course, because it changed my life. So I love this book very much. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay? Okay. Hi, I'm Lindsay. I'm from the Hufflepuffle books. And it's my, it, this is my second time reading it. I read it the first time when I was 13. And now I'm 18 and I read it again and I definitely enjoyed it a lot more the second time. Like I read all like City of Bones to City of Lost Souls, I think, in like two weeks when I first. <laughs> 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 um, and then I read um, all of the Infernal Devices and then I waited for City of Heavenly Fire. But I um, haven't read them again since and I really enjoyed it a lot more the second time. Because it was definitely like one of the like least strong books when I read it the first time. I was like, yeah, that just kind of happened. Glass. <laughs> um, but this time I enjoyed it a lot more than I did the first time. I think I don't know, probably because there were so many more things that I related to. Because when I first read it, I was like, you no, know, a little bean. And now I'm reading it again, and I've realized that I literally am Alec. <laughs> it's really enjoyable to read them again because like I didn't really like him when I read it the first time I was like oh I don't like Alec and now I'm reading it again and I'm like wow same <laughs> so yeah it but probably bumped it up from like a four stars to a five stars this reread oh that's so great <laughs> Sophie Okay, um, my name is Sophie. I'm from Argentina, and my main language is not English, so I'm sorry if I speak something wrong. No, I really your apologize. English is so good. <laughs> Same. Um, um, <laughs> this is my third reread of Studio Fashions, and Emma, you will love this, but the cover is different. I love it. Oh. <laughs> this is the original City of Bones cover, and they changed it, and the City of Bones is actually City of Ashes. And it's oh, actually, cool. it's really funny. Yeah, we're actually the only, um, it's the only version that is like this. And, That's fascinating. 
Yeah, I know. I knew you would love it. I wish I an in audiobook because I always happen that I get to certain chapters and I don't, I cannot follow through. Like it sometimes, like I don't want to keep reading and reading this time in audiobook, like it actually helped me a lot. I really loved it. I loved it even more than the, my second reread. I think I give it like 4.5 or something. And I don't know, I just loved it. Jay's made me laugh so much. I love it so much. <laughs> So yeah, I'm actually really excited to be discussing this book with you. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Agnes? Yeah, so my name is Agnes and I'm from Poland, but I study musical theater in the north of England. So yeah, I relate to Sophie, like English is not my first Ooh. language. So, so if you, yeah, so I have a funny accent. It's a, it's a mix it's of Polish funny. and majority. <laughs> it's kind of I funny. Really yeah. love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I read City of Ashes maybe five, six years ago, and it was my least favorite Mortal Instruments book. And I reread it a few, few weeks ago via uh, audiobook. So I read it for the first time in Polish, and I reread it via audiobook in English. And it was so much better the second time. <laughs> like, I, th <laughs> but I thought the translation takes away a lot of it, but from what you guys are saying, it just seems like the second reread is just better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I, I read it in like two days. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Day. Yeah. Um, okay. So for those of you who are watching, if you aren't already involved in the chat, you can join us for the discussion and share your thoughts. We are also taking questions from the chat to discuss in this live, so, live show. So if you want to ask us any questions or get our input on anything, like please feel free to ask them. Um, to start off, I don't think we've gotten any questions yet, but if any of my lovely co-hosts have a discussion topic they want to jump right into, we are delving into spoilers right now. So if you haven't read City of Ashes and don't want to get spoiled, you should probably leave right now because we're going to be talking about it. Uh, but do any of you guys have anything specific that you want to dive right into? Okay, I have a question that actually bothers me is that I don't understand why everybody hates Clary so much. Like everybody <laughs> says, like she's so whiny, she's complaining, but like you have to understand that she just saw her world shatter, like her mom is gone, all this stuff is happening to her. She found out that she has a very hot brother that she loves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would be really pissed about that. And I, I really want to know, like, why do people hate her so much? Like, I love her. Like, I don't understand her. It drives me so mad. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. I never really understood the Clary hate. I've loved her from the very beginning. And she's, like, newly 16. She turned 16, like, a week ago. And she's already been through so, so much. So I think a lot of her reactions are pretty warranted. And yeah, she's reckless. And yes, she's impulsive. But like, who isn't as a teenager? Like, no one, like so many teenagers, like at that time, we just don't have a conception about like safety and logic and stuff. It's just not there yet, which is just a common thing for teens. I always loved Clary. So I don't, I don't, I get why people say things about her, but I don't think it's always like as bad as everyone else says. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah. I, um, I think I was annoyed with Clary the first time I read the series, but like looking from my perspective now, like I'm 20, I know what it's like to be a 16 year old and <laughs> I kind of, yeah, it's different. Mm. It's just, yeah. <laughs> You're just stupid. <laughs> I mean, teenagers, you know. <laughs> um, we have a few questions from Leah. What is your favorite moment from the book? And Savannah, the bookworm, what's your favorite scene from the book? Does anyone have any, like, favorite, favorite moments? Oh, my God, do I? <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel, oh, my God, not to think about it. Um... All of the books are blending together for me for a yeah. second. <laughs> Wait, I think, I think I do. I think I do. Okay. It's um like like remember when Ma Maya Maya oh my god <laughs> Maya <laughs> Maya and Luke um get attacked by demons. So it's like the morning after. Um, so we have like Clary, Chase, Alec, Magnus, and then Luke, and then Maya is like in the other room. 
-hmm. And then they're kind of talking about the fearless room a little bit. And then like Clary's like, I don't know if it's gonna work. And then like they try it on Alec. And then the Inquisitor, the Lightwoods come in and Alec oh, immediately crazy. was like, mom, dad, I have something to tell you. I am seeing a warlock. And then like Magnus just like, shut up. Right now, <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, that's not a doubt. And then he's like, "What happened?" And they're like, "Like the doubt's like you're about to tell us something." And I don't like what the heck is that? And Alex like, "I don't know. I I don't know." And then he just like stopped talking. <laughs> I was laughing so hard because it's like we find out that the rune works. The fearless rune works. Like he immediately jumps, like like says like, "Hey." I am seeing someone right now and blah, 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 blah. It's so <laughs> funny, it's so good. It's one of my favorites too. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, same. Um, I think another favorite sort of moments of mine, um, the Sealy Court scene is always a favorite. Yeah. Like there's just the so much scene is drama. Everybody's favorite. I'm looking <laughs> at the comments right now, like everybody's loving it. <laughs> there's just so much drama and angst. I love it. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and my first time reading it, I remember that I was like, okay, can you please kiss already? I'm not, I'm not <laughs> reading for two pages. Can you kiss already? And then when they were like, ah, oh, yes, it's continue. <laughs> I really love that scene. Um, there's also another question from Paula Bourdais. Um, Oh no, we just answered that question. So what was your favorite scene? Where is the one? Okay, <laughs> Katsy Hall asks, did your views on characters change as you reread them? So considering all of us have reread the book at least one time, we've read it at least twice. How do you guys feel about it? Like no spoilers for the other books, but how do you feel that your uh, views on the characters have changed? Well, <laughs> 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 going from literally being like uh oh, alec is my least favorite character yeah. he's so annoying <laughs> to being like wow it's me <laughs> like that fearless rune scene like i wish i had a fearless rune when i told my dad about my girlfriend like <laughs> <laughs> i was like wow <laughs> so my opinions on alec changed quite drastically like when i read the books the first time i was like oh i'm totally izzy no <laughs> no no <laughs> I've always been Alex. So that's like that changed. And I didn't like Clary the first time I read it either. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was 13 and I was like, oh, why is she so upset? But now I'm, <laughs> now I'm 18 and I've been through some stuff. And yeah. I've, like, you know, I, you know, have been through some stuff in my teens. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, this reaction is warranted. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's about yeah. everyone else. I still kind of feel the same about because I love all the other characters and I still do. Yeah, but I feel similarly. Oh, who is gonna speak? Uh, I think like, well, my opinion changed on the Sealy Queen. Oh, and I don't want to spoil much, mm -hmm. but if you read till the end of the series, you kind of get what I mean. And the Inquisitor. Oh, the Inquisitor! Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even even when you like uh, get to know her backstory about her son and Valentine, it's like, oh, why? yeah, like yeah. she's like it has really become bitter and cold. Yeah, very. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, um, for me, definitely Alec. Like, I really empathize more with Alec in this book, and like, mm -hmm. there's so many more scenes rereading it where I'm like, this is really funny, as opposed to when I first read it, I'm like, this is annoying. Like, I don't care about this. Yeah. So I definitely have a greater appreciation for Alex, Alec. And I also feel like I like Simon a lot more because when I first mm -hmm. read City Ashes, I was just so mad that he was coming in between Clary and Kate. <laughs> like, I was, Who was I, I think I was 17 when I read these books for the first time. And I was so, I was such a bitter reader. Like, if you were in my OTP and you were in a love triangle, I did not care about you. You were dead to me. And so <laughs> now I, like, love Simon. And so it's nice for reading it and being able to not only like just appreciate him as a character more, but also feel for him in how Clary is just sort of like going along with it. And Simon deserved a lot better than, at least in my opinion, than how Clary treated him because she's like trying to date him while still having feelings for someone else. Mm -hmm. And like, 
So I understand a lot of um, Simon's hurt in this story a lot more now. Whereas when I first read it, I was like, I don't care about this. Like, <laughs> I just care about giving me a chance. Yeah. Plus, yeah. I, I also know what it feels like to like some or love someone for such a long time and then have someone come in mm -hmm. and like you know ruins it yeah. and everything and honestly when i read the end scene like the epilogue and like simon breaks up with her i was like he breaks up with her i completely forgot like who breaks up with who i know that they're gonna break up i just don't remember who breaks up with who mm -hmm. so when he breaks up with her and it's a good reason too like you have feeling for chase and like i don't feel right you know, dating you just because of that and all that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. Like, I, I get why he's like very bitter and hurt when it comes to whole Chase and Clary thing. So it's interesting, honestly, be reading it. And I really like that Simon is the one to break up with her because it's just like, you know, it's a strong moment for him. I feel like everyone would expect climate the climate oh my god <laughs> everyone would expect simon to be the one who is like pining after clary no matter what and he's like showing his independence and he's like standing up for himself being like i'd rather us just be best friends and if you know if things change in the future let me know but i'm not gonna sit here and wait around for something that's not gonna happen yeah. so i feel like that's like yeah. also just like a bump up on his character arc in the way that he stands up for himself Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt like he was like really strong and actually doing that and just letting her go in that way. I mean, I would have not been able to do that. <laughs> it's actually really hard and I kind of respect him more for that. But like he just stays through the entire book just trying to be with her and really getting angry at Clary because he's like really, she's like, oh my God, I'm still in love with Jason. I'm trying to be with you and yeah. he just goes along with it. And I don't know. That, that actually made him like a, a little more this time. Yeah. And then um, another thing that I noticed while with this reread is that Jace made me laugh so much. Yeah. Like on the part of that, I finally understood all his sarcasm and his arrogance and all the things Aww. he was saying. Not like the first time. It like, was this time with Inquisitor. And he was like, you have to admit, why are you being so hard for me? Like, do you like me or something? I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I actually really liked it better more this time, especially Simon and Jace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Proud Bookline asks, like, since we're kind of on the topic, how did you guys feel about Climan in general? Like about Clary and Simon's relationship in City of Ashes? I felt <laughs> so like in the beginning when they kiss and then like a chapter later and someone says this is my girlfriend I was like uh just because <laughs> one kiss does that make, make you automatically a couple even though I can't I, I kind of like I, I that's what I, I just sit there I was like just one kiss though I mean like come on like you, you guys have to like sit down and talk these through like if you want to be a couple and stuff like that but he just like jumps in and be like yeah we're a boyfriend and girlfriend. I'm like, okay, I'm just, I'm taking, I'm taking a word for it. And then like throughout, <laughs> throughout the book, even though they're a couple, they don't act like they're a couple unless Chase is there. Like sometimes like Simon would be like touching her or like be like her boyfriend in a way. And Chase is like, get your hand off of her. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like, but then at the end, like, they break up anyway, mm -hmm. but for, for good reasons, too. Like, it's not like, you know. Yeah, I have to say, on the topic of what you said about Simon saying that Clary is his girlfriend, I actually, while I like Simon Ward, City of Ashes, like, this reread, I was a little upset with the way that he acted about, like, him and Clary's relationship. He was, like, very possessive. Like, yeah. um, you know, like with him saying like, oh, she's my girlfriend without even talking to Clary about it and how he like the exchange between him and Jace when like Jace like gives Clary a steal and like Clary. No. OK. There's a scene at the very beginning where Luke gives Clary the steal for the first time yeah, and Simon's yeah, like, well, I hope yeah. you never have to use that. And it's like, yeah. that's not your decision, oh. Simon. And like, I, I feel like there's a lot of times where like. I can understand him being excited that like he finally got Clary, mm -hmm. but I hate how he like tries to like assert his dominance over her at some points. Yeah. Um, because it was just like, 
dude, like this isn't your lane. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think he seems like left out because Clary is a shadow hunter. And since like her power is about drawing runes and mm -hmm. the stele is like her, her weapon, like, and he's like, oh my God, like, I hope you never use that. Because back then, like, he was a mundane. And yeah. Like, and yeah. plus, like, Jace is like, and Isabel and Alec on that stuff. They're all shadow hunters. And he's like the only one who's not part of the world, but yet he knows about the world. Yeah. Uh, I think oh, it's really, I it's really, sorry, it's really interesting how, like, okay. in, the, in City of Bones, Simon kind of felt like he was losing Clary. To this new world and and to Jace and then I think in the city of Ashes he's like finally happy at the beginning of the book he's finally happy that he has Clary he kind of has her back but then like he's an outsider and then he gets sucked into this world mm -hmm. instead and and loses everything instead and it's just it's really interesting if you think about it mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, what, what I was about to say is like the relationship is kind of awkward because there is this scene that they're <laughs> lying on their bed, they're kissing, and Simon says, I love you. Oh. And Claire is like, So you want to have sex? Like, what? Oh my God. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, I, have, I have to talk about this scene. Every time I read this that scene, I audibly scream oh, out loud. What it's, is that? What it is, is that? <laughs> Listen, Cassandra Clare, favorite author of all time. Mortal Instruments, favorite author of all time. That is the worst scene in any book Cassandra Clare has oh ever God. written. It makes me so uncomfortable. It's so awkward. It's so weird. I can't. That scene, like, just, just take that those, those five sentences out. It's perfect. I, I won't lie. I completely skimmed over it. I was like, no. <laughs> I'm <laughs> reading it this time. <laughs> I'm not doing that again. I don't oh, even God. remember it. I think like my brain just rejected this shit. Like, oh, okay. Your brain was smart. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, Proud Bookline also asks Our thoughts and first impressions of Maya? I hated her. The first time I read the book. No, I'm sorry, but I don't know why. She was just so annoying to me, but like reading it for the second time, I understand more. Mm -hmm. I understand mm -hmm. where she's coming from. She wasn't as annoying. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And maybe she's like blending with the show, TV show Maya kind of a bit, mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, my 15 year old self hated Maya. That's what I remember. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like um, my second time rereading it, I do feel sympathetic, mostly yeah. because I believe the chapter where we opened up about like Maya, and then the first thing we talk about is about her brother and how her brother was like very abusive and hits her and all that stuff. But then of course people think that he's a good guy. So when he dies, she doesn't feel bad about it. And I was like, that's really dark. And then, and and then we like learn more about how, um, her history of boys and how like they're all like jackass and abusive. And then her ex boyfriend Jordan turns her into a werewolf. Mm -hmm. And then like the scene where um where she sees the fear demon and he turns into her brother. That was I was at first I, like it's been such a long time, so I c completely forgot like what's gonna happen next. So I just sat there. I was like. Oh my god, did her brother come back as a ghost or something? Like I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> and then, that was me. <laughs> and then we learned it is the fear demon. I was like, oh that makes so much sense. Okay. <laughs> so we're back on track. So in this book, I do I do feel bad for her because like she's been through a lot. And then at the end, Valentine takes her because like he needs her blood and stuff because she's like a new like not a not a newborn, but like a new werewolf, like a child. So I, yeah, I do really feel bad for her in this book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I definitely, the first time I read it, I thought it was, I was like a little indifferent to Maya in the beginning. Like she's a nice girl. There was nothing wrong with her, but I just didn't care about her as much as all the other characters. Um, but definitely, like, after rereading it and, like, getting to know Maya more, I appreciated her more as, like, a main character in 
City of Ashes. Like she's she's just like a nice person. She's very friendly to Simon, but she's dealing with like her own issues with her brother. And you know, there's like the internalized stigma against her and Simon because they're vampire and werewolf. And then at the end, they sort of reconcile about it and whatnot. So I really I like Maya a lot more now than I did the first time I read her. Yeah. yeah. I was actually really angry that she snapped that way when mm -hmm. she found out that Simon was a vampire. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, you know him. Like, why would you be angry that he's a vampire? Like, you know he's a good person. Yeah. And I like, I remember the first time, like, I was reading the chapter when Cassie introduces Maya, and I was like, is this necessary to know? <laughs> like, it reminded me of Jiggy Rowling's writing. Like, she presents everything before something happens. And the second time I remember, I tried to read her chapter, and I was like, oh, this is so boring. But then, <laughs> with the show, I started to like her a little more and understand her. Like, the show does this, guys. Um, but yeah, I actually liked her um, this time a bit more. But yeah, that part was somehow, like, really pissed me off, too. Like, yeah. why? But then, like, I, I like the fact that she tries to apologize to him. Yeah. yeah. So that says a lot. Yeah, but then they get captured anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is a fun question. So Inquiry, which some of you may remember, was one of our hosts for the City of Bones live show, asks, would you rather be the prisoner of Valentine or the Sealy Queen? Ouch. Sealy Queen. Oh, no. Sealy Queen. Ouch. Oh my god, I say Valentine 100%. The Sealy Queen is terrifying. Uh, I'm gonna say I Valentine. Valentine. Yeah, me too. I feel like I could, I could, I could take on Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> I could escape. I think, like, <laughs> after magic. After reading The Dark Artifices, I'm gonna say 100% Valentine. <laughs> yeah, me too. You need no. to read The Dark Artifices to know that trend. Mm -hmm. You have no idea what I you're missing. I didn't read it yet. That's the thing, I didn't read it yet. Because you haven't read it! <laughs> yeah, I, when I'm caught up, I'll, I'll like let you know if I change my mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I feel like with Valentine, um, like, I feel like if you like pretended to go along with like what he yeah. is stands for, like you can make it out okay. <laughs> Whereas like this silly queen would like you could cough and she would like turn you into a cockroach. You know what I mean? Oh, She's yeah. too unpredictable. Like, with Valentine, all you gotta do is pretend to be on his side and then pull yeah. a Jocelyn in the middle of the night and run away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I hate downloaders. Uh, yeah, wow. Sure. <laughs> Same. Retweet. <laughs> um, Michaela Taylor asks, thoughts on Jace letting Simon drink his blood? And I love this scene so I love it. Yeah. Short scene. Mostly because it was necessary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just love how Simon's like, I could have killed you. And Jace is like, I would have let you. Like, no. so not a lot. Like, no big deal. We, like, act like we hate each other. But this is so cute. I love it. <laughs> I think that was, like, the first scene these two, like, got a real conversation instead of insulting each other. And yeah. That was amazing. <laughs> and then uh, the next time, like, and you will um, that Simon wasn't wet at all, and Clary asked, like, why are you not wet? Why are you still alive? And and he was like, oh, she threw me to a metal thing over there, and I should stay there. And I like, Jay threw him there. That is such, that was amazing. <laughs> um, let's see what other questions. Uh, Kira Toth asks, thoughts on the daylighter scene that was heartbreaking, like, at the end where... <laughs> Well, at least oh. I took it the, the way that we find out that Simon's a daylighter because he's, like, about to die. Yeah. 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 I cry. <laughs> Even though I know what's going to happen, I cry. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Mostly because it's, like, the first time I read it, I, like, I was with Clary. I was, like, because she was, like, oh, maybe we can cover you with clothes and stuff like that. I was, like, yeah, maybe. But then he's, like, no, nah, it's useless because, you know, it's going to, like, burn and everything. And yeah. I was like in denial, but then that scene where he was totally fine, I was just like, oh, I knew he's not gonna like die like that because it's the <laughs> second book. It's the second book. 
but still it was like it makes me nervous yeah, yeah it really does yeah, me too <laughs> like i know and exactly what's gonna like, happen but the first time i read it i didn't actually realize what was happening like when when it was you know like i was shining in the daylight it's like wait what what is going on like i'm not understanding yeah and then when when simon was like in his backyard just taking the phone book and like ah, <laughs> was it was he tanning yeah, like so. Oh, like, it, it mentioned like he was getting like a little red in his cheeks. So like, oh. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> um, the unicorn reader asks, "What did you guys feel about Simon turning into a vampire?" Because I know the first time I read it, I was like really surprised. I did not anticipate that happening at all. But I think it makes so much sense to, you know, go from being a mundane in a group of shadow hunters to being a vampire, a downworlder in a group of shadow hunters because he's still so he's like more involved in the world, but he's still so separated from the rest of them. Yeah. Like he's still really alienated. And I think it's interesting how he brings that perspective of a downworlder like up front and center to the shadow hunters because that's not something they have a lot of experience with. Yeah. Yeah, rereading it, I definitely see a lot of signs, mostly because I, I knew what happened. So then, like, I look carefully at all the little signs that indicate that, like, something's wrong with Simon. And even <laughs> Clary is kind of like, okay, this happened. And then she just kind of, like, looked the other way, I guess. And then <laughs> the scene where Raphael brings his, like, body to the Institute, and I was like, oh my God. But then, like, we, but then, like, it's not like out of like nowhere because in the first book, Simon bit Raphael, and that's mm -hmm. why he turned into a vampire, not because whatever yeah. reason, like, it's not random or, or anything like that. So it happened, but it was like really subtle. And then that scene where, like, she's like, we must, like, um, <laughs> like bury him in the Jewish cemetery or something. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's really sweet because of his religion. <laughs> so she yeah. does, so I think that's yeah. nice. And then, like, the scene where, um, he becomes a newborn vampire and like he's like crawling out and then he needs blood and that stuff and then you kind of see how he sh struggles with blood like he knows he needs it but like he cannot just like go around killing people yeah. so yeah. it must like it must take a lot to control his thirst so i thought that, that was it was a good scene somewhat <laughs> i agree yeah, it hurt it so much to see Simon turning from a human to a vampire. Like, that is a transformation. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and actually, I was, like, I was also paying attention to all those little details saying that how he reacted to Dracula movie. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, that. Yeah, oh, so, yeah, I remember that. Like, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, overall, I really liked his transformation. Like, mm -hmm. I thought, I felt like it was necessary, but it hurt it. So, it yeah. really hurt, first time. Um, let's see. So, um, Hope, Hope, Carlo, and we have a few questions on this. Um, we can discuss Malik in this book because oh. there are, like, oh. little tricklings of things going on between, uh, um, between... Magnus and Alec that I love in this book. So I'm curious on all of your thoughts. So I mean, I love them. <laughs> I, <laughs> I obviously love them quite a bit. Um, <laughs> when I like read it the first time, I was like, oh, this is cute. And it like, was the only time I ever liked Alec. I was like, that's <laughs> cute. And then I'm not rereading it and being like, I am Alec. It's a different perspective. Because, like, what I, what, my girlfriend and I have realized is I'm Alec in like literally every personality aspect. Mm -hmm. And she's very similar to Magnus. <laughs> so like I have a very, very great appreciation for Malik because it's like me and my girlfriend are like the female versions. Yeah. Of them. Oh. So like reading it again, I was like eating up every little detail. <laughs> like I was <laughs> everything yeah. that had like any hint of Malik. I was like, yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you know. I'm kind, it's so much better to read it this time, like, having such a personal, like, connection to them. Like, before, like, I loved it, and Magnus was the first bi character I ever came across, and, like, that's how I figured it out for myself. So, like, 
reading it again, it's like there's such a different, like, new connection to Malik, and I love reading it because I'm like, yes, yes. It's like representation. I'm starved for representation. And yeah, every important. little bit of Malik is like just like seeing my relationship on the page, and that's always like super, super awesome. Mm -hmm. So I obviously have a very unique connection <laughs> to Malik. <laughs> and so, like, it's beyond shipping at this point. It's just like, finally, I have, I can like read something and I relate to it on such a personal level. Definitely, so, definitely. Yeah. That's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the, the scene where like, I was like screaming for Malik is when they were at the, um, the Bone City, City Bones, whatever. And then Alec <laughs> texted him. He came immediately. I was like, okay, <laughs> okay on I see. I see. And then, like, there's just like a lot of scenes where, like, you know, like the scene where Chase goes to the Celia Court, but then Alec had to stay behind. I was like, I, I see what it. you're doing. I know, I got it. And then <laughs> it's just like, oh my God, it's just so wonderful <laughs> seeing it again. The second time, everyone on on the chat, everyone's talking about the hickey scene. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I fell on my neck. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Oh. And Jace is like, okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, and Jace knows. Jace knows. He just yeah. doesn't. Jace like knows. Yeah. I always find a really interesting scene to be about, like, at Luke's house when they're, like, kind of talking about it, but not really addressing it. Yeah. And, like, Jace is, like, trying to, like, tell Alec, like, this doesn't matter. Like, he turns to Alec and he's like, please help me convince him that I, I don't care. And I, I feel like, I, I feel like I noted it. But, like, I think Alec, like, Alec was struggling a little bit with it because, like, he still sort of has, like, underlying feelings for Jace mm -hmm. that he, like, hasn't totally gotten rid of yet, but he does like Magnus, but it's, like, difficult for him to accept that he likes Magnus because that's something that can happen, whereas, like, Jace is safe because he'll Jace will never like him back. Yeah. So I just, I love Alec in this book. Like, I, I have such a newfound appreciation for him as a character, and especially in the way that Malik grows, because there are a lot of little moments in City of Ashes. Yeah. And I just find it, like, so cute. Like, Alec just, like, lights up whenever Magnus is around. But when he's talking about his relationship with Magnus, he's like <laughs> very like, oh no, we can't talk about this. But just like his presence, like it makes him, it, like seriously elevates his mood and it like makes him so much easier to just like be around. And I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I remember like when they, when Alec tested Magnus to go to the Bone City and he sees Magnus was like, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say like the short story it's like really short of like Malik's first kiss is on Cousin Cousin to Clarence on website after I read this I was like I need more Malik so I went through her website to like read something about Malik and then like I found the story of their first kiss and I think that's really cute yeah. Oh, Cassie, yeah if you guys don't know, Cassie has a lot of short stories and stuff on her website. Some of them are spoilery if you're like only delving into the world of Shadowhunters, but she has a lot of cute like little tidbits and stuff that you don't get from the books, which I love. Yeah. Um, that's... I really like Malik. Like I really love like they're going really slow, especially because Alec is not like really addressing the fact that he's starting to like Magnus a little more. And I feel like the show doesn't get that really well because they go so fast. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. okay, you are accusing Malik. Like you need to make it a little slow because most of the couples actually start slow. And the, the, the relationship in the book actually is like, really sweet and it's all about their moments and their little phrases and their looks and that is actually really cute when you actually reread it again and you notice it and yeah i really like Molly. <laughs> I have to say, like, I always wish that I got, like, I mean, we do have, like, with the Bane Chronicles and stuff, there there are, like, some, like, behind-the-scenes stuff of Alec and Magnus in the beginning of their relationship, but, like, I always wanted just, like, a little bit more of them behind the scenes, like, especially with how much, like, I love them now. Yeah. I, like, always am, like, 
I wanna know what's going on, like when they're just like on their wait, did Cassie write their first date? Is that a scene? That yeah, is that in the big the big yeah, 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 yeah. Like I, I love moments like that. It's like I've always wanted more of them. They're just so sweet, I love it. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Because it keeps yeah. bothering me. Mm -hmm. uh, do you guys think that Valentine would actually let the Inquisitor kill Jace? Yes. Mm. Oh yeah, my god. So. It keeps bothering me. Every time like Cassie leaves something like unsaid, I'm like, oh, I wanna know. Yeah. I definitely think he would, you know, he he would burn down like anything for his cause. Um Including his family. Yeah. yeah I, I think, think he, he totally it. Yeah, I think that he would do anything. Like even if it meant, you know, having Jace like murdered right in front of his eyes. Like, I don't think he would ever give anything up for what he believes in. Yeah. Because I feel like everyone in his life, in, even Jace and like his family, like they've been vessels for him. Like mm -hmm. Jocelyn's the only person I feel he ever genuinely cared about. But you mm -hmm. know, um, with, with Jace and with his followers, like they have a purpose to him. And I don't feel it's it's genuine love. I think he just, cares about what people can do for him. And if they don't agree, if they aren't a loyal follower, he doesn't care about them. Especially with the way that Jace yeah. rejected him, like outright, you know what I mean? Like maybe if yeah. Jace like was on his side, maybe he would feel a little bit differently. But the fact that he was like, nah, yeah. father, I'm not doing this. Yeah. And Valentine's like, well, fuck you then. Like, <laughs> <I'm better." laughs> I think you can also like, in the way that Valentine treats Luke, it's yeah. like Luke, like doesn't care that much because they were like hair of a tie and then they're like nope just like yeah. bye. <laughs> I think they I think they were a lot closer than people realize in the books. Yeah. I think a lot of people pass over the fact that they were pair of a tie, but I think that they were definitely like super super close knit. That people like because we don't know them like that, it's easy to be like just brush over it, but like the betrayal that Luke suffered at Valentine's hand, like I think it's much, much stronger than people normally realize. Yeah. I mean, if you guys actually have noticed, like sometimes he, in the books, Valentine says, I didn't have the time and the place to build an army of shadow hunters using the cops, so that's why he brought the entire army of, of demons. So it's like, he's all the time just thinking of how he can do this everything, like everything faster. And I definitely think that he would have let her do that like i was about to mention a scene in city of glass but then i remember this was for city <laughs> i cannot say it but if you read the book like you might know what i'm talking about but yeah i um valentine is so mean i hate him mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh okay i know what you're talking about sorry it took me a while <laughs> <laughs> um Another good question is from Jessa Teresa. Thoughts on Clary blowing up the ship and like everything that happens in the end with her creating the rune that literally just like tears the ship apart. You know what I mean? What are your yeah. thoughts on that? Well, she's a genius that and happened. she has to not be underestimated at all. Yeah, <laughs> that is a really powerful thing. Clary's epic and I love her. Yeah, I don't think oh, yeah. she realizes how power powerful she is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. actually knows that he's powerful, but Clary doesn't, and that's actually how I love. Like she's like, I am not that powerful, and then she creates this rune, and oh, yeah. yeah. The first time I read it, I was so confused. I was genuinely confused because I didn't know what's going on. Like, like she took the sailing and then she did there and then like it exploded and then like she like was in the water and I was like, wait a minute, I'm so lost. But now rereading it, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I just I think Clary and like her rune powers and everything is just like so epic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she's just the coolest and i love the way that we like discover how her rune powers like are a thing you know like in book one um she has the vision of the rune and we don't like when they're on top of the hotel du Mort, and like no one knows what that rune represents at this point 
Um, and then she has the, the rune that she draws on her arm that scares away the demon. And we're like, still like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, and then the Seelie Queen ha like tells her that like she's been experimented on and she has different powers and stuff. Um, and then when they try the Fearless Rune and see that it works, like I, I think it's woven into the story really, really well. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting power to have. It's not like laser eyes and you know, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's what I mean, it's not too convenient. It's just, yeah, yeah. It doesn't like, make her like overpowered or anything. It yeah. just gives her like an edge. Yeah, exactly. And like, it's not like she's like, can just like make rooms for anything. Like she has to like have a, it's not like she'll just be sitting here and be like, oh yes, I need to, I make like six rooms. And it's like, you're all dead now. Probably yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah, like, that's why I enjoyed so much when she created the fearless room. Like she was mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm learning to try. It. And then the next minute she held like, the entire room drawn. I was like, I don't know how this is going to work. Who wants to try out? And <laughs> And I like how even then Clary's like wary of it. She's like, what if it doesn't work or what if it doesn't work the way that it's supposed to? Like, you know, it's it's something that she's very cautious with at the beginning mm -hmm. because she just like doesn't understand it, which I think is very reasonable. <laughs> Let's see. One of her smarter decisions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, how do you guys feel about Maris like telling Jace that he's not a Lightwood and to go somewhere else and just like completely rejecting him at the beginning of the story. That was such a bitching move. Yes. <laughs> it was so mean. Like you adopted, kind of adopted him like for seven years. And then when you found out that like, he's not Michael Wheel and so like you just like, I don't like you anymore. Like no one can actually feel that in 2.0 seconds. It's impossible. And then mm -hmm. I hate it. It's like you're rejecting me because I'm someone else's uh, son. It's, mm -hmm. it's pointless. And it actually hurts Chase. And that's why, actually, in the end, he wants to leave. Like, he took it really serious. Like, it, it, yeah. it was awful. I felt really bad for Chase at that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a very cold and mean way to introduce Marys. Like, it's the yeah. first scene that we see her. And I kind of made an image of her in my mind. Yeah. But like the whole theme of the book is 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 more like it doesn't matter who's your blood, it, it matters who cares about you. Yeah. And like when you find out that like Mary's only kicked him out to protect him, you, you kind of like and the and when she mentions the lullaby, mm -hmm. it's like oh, he's actually That's not so that mean. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, I like how Luke approaches it when he's talking to Clary um, and Simon, and she's like, Luke is like, well, you know, you have to remember that, like, she was betrayed by Valentine before, and this just feels like it's happening all over again, you know, like, she feels that um, you and Valentine betrayed her trust, and even though that she's wrong, like, you know, she's trying to protect her family, and, you know, she she also, she sent him away so that the Inquisitor couldn't, um, you know, like, in yeah, like, she didn't yeah. want him being involved with the Inquisitor, so while I think she was way too harsh with it, like, I can yeah. see, like, I can understand her thought process, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, I've always really resented Maris for it, because, like, there was no reason for her to, to act that way. But I, I do understand like her, her conflicted feelings on the situation. But I do love how Jay says, I think it's in the very beginning where it's like, I never reminded you of Valentine before. I don't know why I would now. And like, you, I was still the same person I am when you thought that I was Michael Whalen's son. Like I, I like how Jace does stand up for himself and doesn't just like take it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Chase, yeah. he would have to defend himself. Yeah. <laughs> he has to. Yeah, I think my favorite, well, one of my favorite scenes is like the confrontation between Luke and Mary Reese. I think that's how I say her name in the beginning. I forgot the chapter, but it was like after they find, after Clary and Luke find 
chase in like the prison cell and then like mm -hmm. they're like let's go to the institute and talk to her and blah 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 and then they confront each other and it was like her first time seeing luke after so many years and he's like a different man and everything mm -hmm. and like that confrontation between like that like about the uprising and how like and how it's just like i, don't, I forgot what page but it was so good i just sat there and just observed everything and like the scene where clary tells um Maurice that Valentine is not her dad, Luke is, and he's like really shocked and really surprised. And I just sat there, I was like, that's like really sweet. And then like the whole Inquisitor happened and all that stuff. But that was one of my favorite scenes definitely in this book because that confrontation was huge. And uh, it's just, it's intense and I really love it. <laughs> Let's see what other questions that we have. And if you guys have any like, Feel free to bring him up. I saw someone that asked a, a while ago, like, how, what are our thoughts on the Inquisitor? Mm, that's a good one. I know. <laughs> a trend <current> essay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys have listened to the audiobook, but uh, the woman who narr narrates it is actually a genius because she makes the voice of the Inquisitor like, she she talks about, um like her and it's like I'm hating her right now. It's like I'm hating the narrator for doing it such a good job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I could find an essay too about the her. Like Yeah. You know, she oh I hate her so much. <laughs> <laughs> I have like enough thoughts to write ten essays and a power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Ugh, I just reading it again. I like forgot just how angry she makes you. Like oh. it had been so long since I read it, and like I remember like not liking her. Like I almost for blocked her out entirely because. <laughs> <laughs> and then I read it again, and I was like, "Oh, this bitch! I forgot about her." I know it's just she's crazy. She is literally crazy. Yeah, yeah literally. Yeah, but just, oh. Wait, the. She's so interesting to me because she's just like she's so confident in her own experience. Like yeah. she is like so sure that Valentine would never allow his son to <laughs> be killed because of how much she loved her son. Yeah. And she's like so shocked and so surprised by it, like completely caught off guard. And um what was I gonna say? And so what was I saying? So yeah, I think she's like really interesting because of how much she loves her son and how that is like such a huge motivator in everything that she does in City of Ashes and how she allows that to get in the way of like what is best for the Shadow Hunters. And I, I do like how in the end she accepts responsibility. Like this is literally her fault, everything that happened. Um, and I think her sacrifice is really interesting because at the end of City of Ashes, we don't yet understand it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it also comes with the fact, I think like the scene where Va Valentine tells her that I don't care about Chase, like you can kill him, yeah, cool, I don't care. And then she's genuinely shocked. I think that is like a really good reaction because first and foremost, she was a mother. She yeah. knows what it's like to have a child, to love a child. And for her to witness this man who just willing to sacrifice his own son for the greater good or whatever, she's genuinely shocked. And I like how um, she comes to the realization that she effed up so much even um the light woods like the scene where marie's like kind of hold the sword against her or something like that and she's like yeah. you're going like that was a great scene she's like you're going to call the clave and like we need backups to like you know win this battle and all that stuff and then the scene at the end where she dies <laughs> um that that was honestly like I think a page before she died, I was laughing so hard because the, the scene where she's like, what's that on your shoulder? And it's like a, it's like a little scar on Jay's. And he thought he was, he thought she was talking about his shirt. And he's like, oh yeah, I got from Mason's winter sale. I was laughing so hard. I was like, of course, of course he, he would say shit like this during a battle. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, but then like, he's, like he's so ridiculous. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, same. Like I actually actually forgotten how bad the, Inquis the Inquisitor was. Like it actually reminded me of certain character in Lord of Shadows. Who might know? Who might be know. like her? Like I know. So you will need to read it. So yeah, I know. know. But We're like trying to convert you. Just read it. Read it. <laughs> yes. But yeah, like I was actually remember. I was coming up with this phrase that says um, the similarities between the real world is pure coincidence. And I was like thinking like, oh my God, the Inquisitor looks like mm, the real world now, like ignoring everything that is happening, not believing everything and just doing bullshit. Sorry for the word, but yeah, it's okay. that, it, she reminded me of that. Let's see what other questions. Um, Sassy Queen says, thoughts on Clary and Luke's relationship? Oh. <laughs> I love it. I really do. I think it's, um, it's great just because, like, she really never has a real father. Like, we were, like, she was told that, like, her dad died, but then really it's Valentine. And she's just like, no, 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 no. So, in a way, Luke has been her dad like her father figure for a really long time she since she was young and that's why she felt really betrayed in city of bones when she overheard the conversation between luke and like the the other shadow hunters so in this i like how their relationship is really developed and how it's like a yeah. positive thing how she says that luke is like her father and then i love that conversation at the end of the book about his love for her mother and like they, they talk about that and how like he sacrificed everything for her but then like her mom doesn't feel the same way and Clary's just like no I think she does feel the same way like you must have confidence about that mm -hmm. and I, I just love their relationship very much and I'm I'm so glad that you know I see it in this book a lot yeah I, I really love their relationship I mean like this scene that you were talking about where he is um explaining to Clary about what happened when Jocelyn first left and how like he offered to marry her, mm -hmm. but it was more selfish yeah. than protecting her. Mm -hmm. And he could admit that. Um, and so I really, I just love the way that Clary looks to him as a father figure. And I think that Luke is like, that's what he wants so much from them, but he's still a little reserved about taking on that role because like he doesn't want to overstep on Jocelyn or he's afraid of like not being a good father for Clary. Like I think his reservations about it are really evident and it's just like so sweet, but I feel the relationship, especially in city of ashes, like after they reconciled in city of bones and like Clary fully understood like what mm -hmm. happened with Luke. Like, I think it's just, they have a really sweet relationship and I love it like so, so much. <laughs> I actually like, especially in the epilogue, that Clary was at Simon's house, and when she uh, she left Simon's house, like Luke was waiting for her, and she was like, "You didn't need to do this for me. Like you already dropped me off." It was like, "This is so sweet." Like <laughs> it actually summarizes their entire relationship, and I loved it. Yeah, it's so cute. <laughs> All right, um, let's see if we have any like last minute questions. We'll see if we can take maybe like one or two more because we're coming up on the end or if any of you guys have any questions or discussions, like feel free to throw them out there. Um, I've seen a funny one, not on the chat, but like on the internet. If like, if you guys think within the paranormal context of the book, if Jace is a racist. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. How he calls the downloaders, you know, blood suckers and all that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like casual terms, like dr dr yeah, rather very whatever. Because that yeah. that book is really strong on on like between downloaders or downloaders on on prejudice and all that. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that it's not only Chase; it's actually the yeah. world. Yeah, like the, the shadow hunters in general. Yeah, the shadow yeah. hunters, like the werewolves, like I remember in the first scene, it's like, it's your job to do this. Like, you don't need to treat us that badly just because we're downworlders or something. And Jess was like, yeah, I don't care. And I believe it's actually the world, not just Jace, the, the ones that they're racist. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's the upbringing that causes a lot of it because, you know, especially like Maris and Robert, like they they really have issues with the town worlders <laughs> and they've grown up in they've grown up in this house um built on these prejudices and that's like all they've known. So I think it's understandable that they would grow up that way, but um and I think that Jay's definitely does use um like their species as an insult when he's just like annoyed with them like he can yeah. probably insult simon for like a million other things he doesn't need to call him bloodsucker you know what i mean um so i don't think it's always that he actually believes that they're underneath him it's that that's like what he's grown up around and so he yeah. uses that as an insult which like obviously isn't okay but mm -hmm. i do like to think that like as the series grows i'd say probably by book three i think that at least like the main group of characters had really extinguished a lot of the prejudices yeah. that they previously mm -hmm. held which is yeah 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 <laughs> Right. Um, I, I saw think... this question. Mm -hmm. um, if there was anything to could add in or take out from the book, what would it be? Uh, the scene where Clary asks Simon <laughs> if that if she wants sex. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Everything uh, else so good. Uh, <laughs> what scene? <laughs> Do you guys have any other um, scenes that you would want to take out from the book? Um, yeah, hmm. I think for me that's just perfect. Maybe like this, like the first scene from Maya, it would have been cooler to actually find out when she tells somebody about it. Mm -hmm. But like to actually find out her story through some somewhere else, uh, but not just like the entire description of it. But that would be my only critique. Um, I feel like, yeah, remove that one, that one little scene there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then, like, in terms of, like, adding things, I would just want more, like, Malik stuff. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just, like, give me a little, little more. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take wish. more Malik. <laughs> I, I kind of oh, wish the Inquisitor would, would live a, a bit longer, but I get why that didn't happen. <laughs> Yeah. Someone here says like we should have more Max Lightwood scene. Oh, yeah. I want yeah. more Max. I yeah. love him. Yeah. He's I love the scene yeah. with Clary when like she like meets him for the first time. She's like left alone with him. She's like, what do I do with him? Like she doesn't know how to interact with the night. But I think they they have some like cute conversations about how like they both look really young and they talk about manga and stuff. It's really cute. Yeah. I'm all for more Malik and more Max Lightwood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. I think that really concludes our Wait, I have one. Go no. for it. Go yeah. for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, it's just like one thing that I always Go say. Go for it. So in City of Bones, I noticed that Clary I find her annoying, but I don't hate her, but I do find her kind of annoying, not, not because of how she reacts to this whole change, but because I find her very insecure about her appearance. So when she looks at Isabel, she would make like remarks and then there's a scene in the city of bones where she like says that she wants to dump food on Isabel's head and stuff. And I was like, girl, that is so extreme. And then in this book, on page 274, I have it underlined it's basically when like um they're in luke's house and then like luke and maya are recovering from the demon wounds mm -hmm. and right here a passage that says honestly clary thought it was hardly fair for a werewolf to be curvy and pretty she ought to be big in her suit possibly with hair coming out of her ears and this clary added silently is exactly why i don't have any female friends who and spend all of my time with simon i got to get a grip i was like Finally, you're realizing that yeah. you're projecting yeah, you on so many <laughs> people. For her to think that, oh God, why is Maya so pretty? She should be like big and hairy because she's a <laughs> werewolf. And then she realizes that, oh, so this is why I am so bitter and insecure. I was like, yes, girl, yes. We need to I fight for this issue. there. We need to fix this because like I'm sure everyone was insecure at some point, but like I have I have never thought badly of anyone 
just to make myself feel better. And I don't like when people do that, yeah. like, like just like being really just hard on other people just to make themselves feel better. Cause like, it's really toxic. And I also noticed that at the end, the scene where Simon breaks up with her and his reason is because like she has feeling for someone else and he doesn't want, want to be with that. And then she asked him, is this about Maya? Like she feels threatened that like, I don't know, maybe Simon could like some other girl and not her, but it's like, you don't even love Simon that way. So mm -hmm. I don't know why you should feel threatened that he likes someone else, even though my is a werewolf and he's a vampire. So that's something that I saw. And I'm like, maybe, maybe she will grow out of her insecurity in the later books. I don't remember if she will, honestly, it's been like five years, mm -hmm. but I'm hoping that she will grow out of that. And so that's something I noticed in this book. And I like the fact that she calls out on herself and be like, I need to stop. I need to stop thinking about these things. So that's yeah. Mine. And you know what? I actually I have that marked too. You have one. And too. I'm <laughs> I'm 99% sure that is the last moment that we ever see Clary hating on another girl for no reason. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like at least that I can recall off the top of my head because I remember the City of Bones ones and the City of Ashes ones like really really good. I don't remember it happening, and I think that's like the last moment. You know, and that's where she really starts to grow closer to Maya and Isabel and stuff, which I love. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's a really, really great point. Um, I don't know if anyone has any, like, one more question or last thing to talk about. Um, but I think that really concludes our live show. So thank you guys so much for those of you who have been watching. And thanks to all of my lovely co-hosts for joining in on this discussion with me. Because I have had so much fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so thank you guys so much for participating. Um, as for City of Glass, I believe it's scheduled to be around like mid to late March is when the next live show for City of Glass will be if you want to participate. Um, but definitely head on over to the Drag Society Facebook page and you can check out all of the co-hosts and their channels and stuff in the description of this live stream. And if you ever want to come back to it, this will be on my channel for forever. Mm -hmm. But um, thank you guys so much for watching and thank my lovely co-hosts for participating. I had so much fun. But we will definitely see you guys for the next live show. Woo. Bye. 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 Bye.